Hello, it is I, Reading Evie. I have finished Seven Ways We Lie by Riley Redgate. It's a book about seven high schoolers, um, basically going through life, you know, as, as a high schooler, as a teenager. Um, each of them has, like, their own set of problems. I'm pulling up my notes now. I... Gotta find it. There we go. Okay. So, I think I have a note about each one. Um, so basically, it starts off with a with an assembly. And we find out that a, uh, a parent, or not a parent, a uh, teacher is dating a student. Um, has some kind of relationship with the student. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Choked on spit. Um, anyway, we don't know who it is yet. Um, since it's, uh, not really, it's not really a mystery book. It's kind of like a young adult book. Um, but since there is, like, a type of mystery, um, you know, figuring out who the student and the teacher is, um, I am reading these in order, uh, well, I mean, it's pretty much like I always do, I read them in order according to my notes, which was according to when I read the book, like what scene I read. Anyways, so the first character, Cat Scott, um, she reminded me of myself in high school. She was kind of conceited and just tired of people's shit. Um... I like to think I'm not conceited anymore. Like, looking back, I know I really was. Um, and I was also tired of life already in high school. Um, but, uh, she really reminded me of myself. I can't remember, like, exactly the, the line that made me think of that, but... Uh-huh. So... The second student, Juniper, which I thought was kind of a neat name, but um, definitely has issues. Like when we first get inside her brain, it's in poem form, like what Ellen Hopkins did, except for this one was just like nonsensical rambling. Like, let me see if I can find it. I think it was just like the second chapter or so. Um, let's see. Oh, that's cat. Uh, la di da. La di da. There's Matt. Uh, ah, here it is. This cover's giving me issues. Um, I guess it's not like completely nonsensical, but it's like. Finally, I am the last car here. I am an island. I returned here, tugged back by some irresistible gravity, but I hit the ground too hard. My knees are buckled, leaving me prostrate. Stop crying. You're in public. Grip the wheel tight and dry. Don't think. Just go. I'm home, I say. More of a defense than an announcement, because this place is not home anymore. The only voice to whisper back is the cuckoo clock. No. I don't know, but it was basically poetry, kind of, which I just, I hate poetry, um, but yeah, so Valentine, uh, another name I liked, was talking about how there's nothing to see in their town of Paloma, Kansas, um, which is the setting. Uh, basically Paloma High School, kind of, but, and he, they were talking about, or yeah, he was talking about it being a small town, they all kind of were, and I was expecting it, like, you know, to be really small, like, my hometown, Drumright, um, which, like, I think has a population of, like, 2,000, maybe, um, but then he was, like, population of 38,000, I was like, that's not small. I guess technically, compared to, you know, I don't know, Tulsa. I don't even know the population of Tulsa. 
of like New York City, you know, like, but still, eh. um, so yeah, I was really surprised when they were like population of 38,000 and there was like nothing to do in the town, which I guess that could describe Weatherford, um, like I don't really know the population of Weatherford, but maybe I'll look it up. Um, so I, the next note is about two other students, Claire and Olivia, and basically I just wrote Claire is so judgmental about Olivia Set's life. Most people were, like there's um, some slut shaming in the book. Um, and it's not like uh, viewed as okay. Like they uh, I wrote it kind of well I think. But like Olivia has like an active sex life and um, the only one or like she defends it and like other people do too. But then there's like <clears throat> Claire who's supposed to be her friend and like all she does is just judge her. Um, so the next one, Kat started talking to Valentine about an email they got, which was uh, basically about what the assembly was about. Um, uh, teacher, dating, student. And I was just like, it's probably fake. What I thought was funny was Valentine is the one who heard a teacher and a student being inappropriate. Um, they, he was walking by, like, after school, he was walking by an empty classroom and, um, like, listened for a little bit, um, because he, he like, heard a, t a student say, I love you, and he heard a teacher. He just couldn't figure out, like, he didn't know who they were, so he wrote, um, that email, um, to like they have like an anonymous drop box or whatever to the school um I just thought it was funny because she was talking to the one who wrote the email uh my next one was I bet it's Juniper who's the student I don't remember why I, I thought that but um I think it was just because of like how weird her head was like inside of her head I don't know. And then I wrote, poor Claire just has the worst self-esteem, which she really does, and that was part of why she judged Olivia so much for her sex life, because she wasn't getting any, um, wasn't really getting guys interested in her either, and so I felt bad for her, because she's only, like, a kid, basically, or she is, I think they're juniors. Um, and she's just like always comparing herself to others, putting herself down, and it was just, it was sad to read, but, um, because it kind of reminded me of myself in high school. <sighs> I almost deleted some notes. Uh, Lucas, another student that we hear about, has like a book of lists that I love. Excuse me. He has like a journal that are just a list. And I love lists. Like it made me um kind of want to start my own. And they're just like random lists, like some are to do list, um trying to think of uh, I don't know. I can't think of a list that he had. But um there was a teacher, Mr. Garcia, who seemed like a great teacher. Um, and I wrote, I hope he's not the one who's with the student. Because he was Kat's um, drama teacher. And then... I don't remember what other subject he taught. Um, but he like gave Kat a ride after school one day. And was just giving her advice. And he like seemed to really care about Kat. And then, I think that was the only one, like, that we really saw him with. Um, but he was just, like, a really great teacher. Um, 
So I, yeah. Uh, so Lucas is um, pansexual. Yeah, he's not gay. Um, and he didn't tell anybody there because it's a small high school. Um, and like people already like say homophobic shit at the high school. So he, uh, so he didn't really like trust to come out. Um, he kind of told Matt, who was a student that we know about, um, like, he, like, asked him out, um, and Matt is straight, but he was cool with it, like, he, um, like, he was, he's a stoner type anyway, well, is a stoner, um, so he wasn't, like, judgmental, um, he was just, like, no. But he was, like, taken back that he had asked him out. Because it was, like, after they had a car accident. Um, they, like, somebody had, like, ran into the other, but not hard or anything. Every one was okay. Honestly, I forgot about it until now. Um, but anyways, he, uh, so Matt knew, um... But Lucas was just like, can you not tell anyone? And Matt was like, yeah, cool. And then he got high one day. And this was like near the end of the book, kind of. Whereas that was the beginning. <clears throat> the first we even hear about them. Um, uh, Matt had gotten high. And then he ended up. He saw Lucas and Valentine together. They were getting close. Um, ironically enough, they weren't even doing anything. They were just hanging out. Uh, but he was high and <laughs> thought he saw them. And so he accidentally told Olivia. Uh, yeah, Olivia. Um, and like, he didn't really even, like, mean to. He was just, like... Uh, he just like mentioned Lucas and his boyfriend or whatever and of course she was surprised um, because Lucas had also dated Claire for like 13 months um, obviously without telling her uh, and then broke up with her and uh, so Olivia went and told Claire about it and then Claire like freaked out and I didn't like her reaction mostly because like I get me mad that he lied but um I don't know I don't remember exactly what she said but it was just kind of ridiculous she still like made it about her and her insecurities it's, I just I didn't like her reaction then I wrote, God damn it, it's Garcia. He was he was the teacher. Um so Juniper like drank too much or something. Um it wasn't overdosed. Like I I think she just drank too much. I don't remember. She ended up being in the hospital. Um I guess he uh, she had called him uh drunk before passing out and then after she gets to the hospital um, after a party obviously it was thrown in her house uh, Olivia, Matt, Valentine Valentine I don't remember who else um, Olivia, Matt, Valentine oh and Kat were um, What's cat there? I don't know. We're left in her room to clean up the messes from the party and uh, she had thrown up. And anyways, her phone was there and it started ringing and um, Olivia goes to answer it. I guess to tell whoever, basically to see who it was, I guess, tell them that she was in the hospital. Anyway, she answers it and the voice just starts screaming at her. We don't hear what they say because it's in a different person's view. But, um, <clears throat> voice starts yelling at her, blah, blah. And she was like, this isn't Juniper. And then she was like, 
recognizes the voice and she's like, Mr. Garcia? And yeah, it was him. And then, so, you know, the student is Juniper. So, I was right about her. Sadly, I was... Well, I didn't really guess. I just said that I hope he's not the one, but sadly he was. Um, they tried to, like... She tried to justify it by saying that um, they hadn't slept together. Um... And because she was just like telling Olivia that they're not gonna know, like the cops or parents or whatever, it's not the they're not gonna know that she ended. No, he ended it. Um, and that they didn't sleep together, but it was just like he could have not started it to begin with. Um, he hadn't known because he was new to the school. Um, and I guess he saw her at the coffee shop where she worked at, and so they started talking there. I don't remember how they described Garcia, but I don't think he was, um, like, that old or anything. I think he was out of college, maybe? I don't remember. Um, I know they had, like, one teacher who was out of college. I don't remember if it was him or not. Um, but yeah, I was so sad to find out it was him because he was a good teacher, so we thought, or at least a cat, and then he turned out to be that, so. Um, so after Claire found out about Lucas, um, she had, like, confronted him, and, um, she was, like, so angry that she put his name down with a male teacher who, I don't remember, who, it wasn't Garcia, um, she put, like, their names down for, like, the guidance counselor, because they had, like, papers out, if anybody knew, like, any information, you can just go to their door, and for, like, anonymous, too, and she, like, fucking put his name down, I was just like, really? And then that's how, like, everyone found out, that's how he came out, or had to come out, because of that. And, like, I really just hated Claire then. Um, like, uh, I think it was Olivia. Or maybe it was Juniper. One of them found out and um, was just like, that's not okay, Claire. Um, so I'm, I was glad they didn't, like, enable her. Um, but, yeah, that was such a dick move. Um... My last note was Garcia turned himself in. Um, I was surprised because, by the way, like, he was talking to Juniper or whatever. It just didn't sound like he was going to. Um, I, we don't know what really happened to him. I think he just, um, he moved away. I don't think he got, like in actual legal trouble since they didn't sleep together. Which I think he should have anyways if he didn't. Um, but the parents did find out, obviously. And they were just like... Um, after she turns 18, if she wants to contact you then, she can. But until then, like if we hear from you, they're, we're getting a restraining order. Um, which I was glad for, but I, like, they should have just called the cops then, I guess. But it was whatever. Um, they he still turned himself in, so that was good. But anyways, that was all the notes I had for the book. Um, so I liked it. Um, I think if you're looking for like a quick read. Um, quick read and um, I don't know maybe like a young adult I think it's a young adult I don't know that's just how I describe any excuse me any um, high school book <laughs> young adult but um, yeah I was reading the back anyways but 
Yeah, I liked it. Um, it's basically like seven students, seven deadly sins, as you could I was gonna say as you could tell by the cover, but you probably can't read all of it. But is if you can see a couple of them, the seven deadly sins. And then next I'm gonna read is the girl in the ice. I already started it today. Um, I got to chapter six, page thirty-nine. However, the chapters are really short. There's like eighty-six chapters, but only like three hundred pages. Yeah, like almost four hundred. And there's like eighty-six chapters, so they're really short. Um, but yeah, I am liking it so far. I almost described what it was about, but that'll be for the that book's video. Um, if you happen to have read Seven Ways We Lie, which I don't think I know anybody who has, maybe, um, comment down below and tell me what you thought about it. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Yeah. Have a good night.